Welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about making truly good cocktails and not resorting to using mixes. And unfortunately, everybody is going to notice that my tiki banner is missing in action, which is quite disturbing to me, but we'll locate it somehow sometime. But in the meantime, we're just going to have to make do on the show without the tiki banner. At any rate, today we're going to talk about drinks that are made with brandy. And it's really sad that brandy tends to be an ingredient that is, you might say, not used as much as it should be in mixed drinks. And we're going to do a couple of drinks today. In fact, uh, initially one that mainly incorporates gin, but also involves brandy. And that is the Singapore Sling. And it's really sad, too. Singapore Slings were immensely popular in the 70s and the 60s. But they kind of fell out of favor in the 80s and 90s in the beginning of this century. But they're undergoing kind of a renaissance and a resurgence because people are developing more of an interest in classic cocktails. And they're discovering just exactly why people enjoyed those cocktails so much. And the Singapore Sling is a nice, refreshing drink. It is sometimes erroneously classified as a tropical drink when it actually is not. It was actually created at the Raffles Hotel in Singapore by a bartender named Mr. Lee. And it's an innovative, creative drink, a really interesting one that combines flavors and produces, I think, a wonderful result. And there's many ways of making a Singapore sling. There's many ingredients that different bartenders and mixologists will incorporate in making the drink. It always involves gin, and it always involves some sort of a cherry cordial or brandy or a liqueur. But some put Benedictine in it, of all things, which is OK. And some people put other ingredients in it, like orange curacao. Um, some have used ingredients in it that I find very, very strange. Uh, very commonly, cream de cassis is used in a Singapore sling, but I don't choose to make mine that way. At any rate, I'm going to demonstrate my style of the Singapore sling. And I think it is a lovely drink, and people tend to love this particular style. It's a good summer drink. It's refreshing. It has a hint of sweetness, but it's not cloying. And it incorporates some fresh fruit, the squeezing of some fresh fruit. And it's almost always best consumed in a chimney glass, either plain or frosted. So we're going to set about making a Singapore sling. And first of all, I'm going to put some ice in the glass. And I'm going to do it the clumsy way again by bending over. Pardon me. And at first, we're just going to attempt to put enough ice in to start mixing the drink. But then um, I'm going to put a little bit more to top it off. But anyway, the first important ingredient is gin. And again, it doesn't have to be a real she-she expensive gin in making this drink. Uh, we don't want rot good, of course, or something that's ultra, ultra cheap. But something that's decent is perfectly fine. So we're going to free pour a bit of gin in there. And then I personally like to put a hint of brandy in my Singapore sling. Thus the emphasis again on brandy. So we have a hint of brandy in there. And then a very important ingredient. And that is we need to use some sort of a cherry cordial or liqueur. And this is a bit on the deep pocket side, but I love it. It's um, cherry hearing, which is made in Denmark. But the flavor is absolutely superlative. And I think it marries very well with the other ingredients that are really important in a Singapore sling. So I'm going to put some of the cherry hearing in here. And it will help to give it a pretty color. And again, if you choose to use cream de cassis, you can. But generally, it's mostly required if you use another 
cherry cordial. But with the cherry herring, you don't really have to put the cream de cassis in. And I also like to put a little tiny bit of an orange infused liqueur. It could be orange curacao, it could be Cointreau. In this case, it's triple sec. Just a tiny bit in. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of maraschino in. Just a hint, and if you wanna get fancy and spend more money, you can use maraschino liqueur, but this is just maraschino juice, and I put a maraschino cherry in there too. And now we're gonna put a little bit of fresh fruit in here. And I like to put both a bit of lemon, a bit of lime, and a tiny squeeze of orange. And again, hand squeezing is absolutely a requirement because we wanna get those oils, the infusion of the oils out of the peel. So here we go. First of all, we're gonna do some lemon. And then we're gonna do a bit of lime. Gotta saw through this one, this is a tough one. There we go, and oh, you can just smell the essence from that peel. Smells so good. And then just a tiny bit of orange. And many mixologists don't bother using orange in a Singapore sling, at least not fresh orange. But I think a little bit of it, you know, just makes the difference between mediocrity and distinctiveness. So there we go. Now, at this particular point, I'm gonna do a little bit of stirring. And then I'm gonna add more ice. And then at the very, very end, we wanna put a top of uh, sparkling water in our Singapore sling. And of course we wanna mix that in a bit so it's not just sitting there on top and not marrying with the rest of the drink. And again, as I often mention, sometimes to facilitate the even blending of a drink, I will shake it in a cocktail shaker and then divest it ice and all into the chimney glass. And from the appearance of this, we need a little bit more of the cherry hearing just to have that richness in it. And right on the top is a good spot for that. And we want to add a little bit of a garnish. So we're going to add just a bit of lime and then we're gonna add a bit of lemon as well. And maybe even just a little bit of orange zest for appearance and also to add that infusion of oil in here. So there we have a lovely Singapore sling. And I'm gonna take a taste of it to see if it really lives up to all the hype. Oh yes, that is a beautifully mixed drink. You can taste the gin, you can taste the brandy. Most of all, you get that really lovely edge of the cherry hearing. And again, this is a lovely drink, good for summer, good for any occasion. And as I always mention on my shows, we want to enjoy our cocktails, but let's enjoy them using moderation and sensibleness and an appreciation for the person who prepared them. There's nothing particularly advantageous or complimentary about just downing a drink. So help, help us to really show moderation in our consumption. Help keep our community safe and well spoken of. And thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. Again, I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist, and we look forward to more episodes. Thank you again. Goodbye.